Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tear, and today I decided to do a number, another number theory video. Today I'm going to talk about maximal prime gaps, and I'll tell you what those are in a minute. Um, anyway, let's begin. So uh, first I have to talk about what prime gaps are. Uh, prime gap is just a uh, um, you know, if, if you define Pn to be the nth prime, then we can say the nth prime gap, we can call that Gn, and we could just define that to be Pn plus 1 minus Pn. So, for instance, G1 would be 3 minus 2, since 2 is the first prime and 3 is the sex prime, second prime, that's just 1. And that's the only prime gap that's equal to 1, because all other primes besides 2 are even. So the second prime gap would be 2, 5 minus 3. The third is also 2, 7 minus 5. The fourth is 4, 11 minus 7, so on. And it's kind of irregular. I mean, some gaps are big, some gaps are small. And according to the twin primes conjecture, there is infinitely many twin primes. There's just primes that differ by 2. So there should be infinitely many values of n such as gn equals 2. But we're not really interested in prime gaps themselves. We're interested in what are called maximal prime gaps. These are prime gaps. Uh, I'm calling them capital G here. So we say capital G is a maximal prime gap if it's equal to a prime gap little g sub n such that um, little g sub m is less than little g sub n for all m less than n. That just means that there's no prime gaps uh, um, is large or larger uh, than than um, capital G for any primes less than Pn. Um, so it's the biggest one you have so far. And uh, I guess I can give you a few examples of those. Uh, I mean, obviously, capital, the first maximal prime gap is just one. That's the prime after two. Next one is uh, two, which is the prime, you know, gap after three. Those aren't very interesting, but then the first gap of size 4 would be, I guess, after 7. So that's another maximal gap. I guess the next one's after 23, you have a gap of size 6. And then you have to get up to 89 to get a gap of size 8. Um, you actually get a gap of size 14 when um, you know, P is 113, because there's no primes between 113 and 127. Anyway, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit more later, but uh, the biggest maximal, it turns out there's there's a total of 82, the first 82 maximal prime gaps are known. And I'll show you a table in a minute, but the largest known maximal prime gap is um, 1,572, and this occurs after a 20-digit prime. So I guess all the primes have been tab tabulated up to this 20-digit prime, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. But it turns out that this particular prime, which I'm not going to read off here, um, has a maximal sized prime gap following it, um, which in this case is 1,572. And here's a table of the known maximal prime gaps. Like I said, there's 82 known ones, and um, I think the first few I already told you what they are. Uh, you know, this is a little bit of an irregular list because uh, notice that there's no, uh, the, I mean, the, the gap of size 10 is not maximal. There are primes that differ by 10, consecutive primes that differ by 10, but they're not a maximal gap. And so you kind of jump from 8 to 14. There's places where this, you know, these gap size jump in kind of unpredictable ways. Um, but anyway, um, you know, one thing I was a little surprised by when I first learned about these maximal prime gaps is they're really not nearly as big as I would have expected. I mean, you know, uh, it means that if you, if you go to these 20-digit numbers at the end of the list, 20-digit primes, you don't have to go very far to get a prime that's not even that much larger than that. The next prime is only expected to be, I mean, it's only expected to be n over log, 1 over log n, uh, by the prime number theorem and the natural log, I'm talking about the natural log here, and the natural log of um, 10 to the 20 is about 50, I think. So you only expect a prime gap of about 50 following the largest prime on this list. In this case, you get one of size 1572. That's why it's maximal. It's a lot bigger than you expect. 
but it's still not really that big. I mean, it's a lot smaller than I would have expected anyway. Um, and there's some there's some conjectures on the size of the maximal prime gap. There's there's conjectures about the upper bound of uh, of GP. Uh, GP is just the prime gap following a prime P. It doesn't have to be maximal. But if you can give an upper bound on GP, then you've also given an upper bound on the maximal prime gap for primes of size P. And there's three uh, kind of interesting conjectures about it. Um, I think Kramer came up with the first of these conjectures in 1936. He said that G of P is big O of uh, the natural log of P quantity squared. Big O just means that it's uh, less than or equal to some constant times the natural log of P quantity squared. Um, there's also a conjecture called Firuzbachel's conjecture, or Firuzbach's conjecture. He came up with it in 1982. He said that the n plus first root of uh, the n plus first prime piece of n plus one is always, he conjectures, is always less than the nth root of the nth prime. Kind of an interesting result. And uh, uh, finally, uh, Granville, I think, refined uh, Kramer's conjecture in 1995. He didn't give any value for this constant in front of LNP quantity squared, but um, Granville did. He said that this constant has to be greater than or equal to 2 over e to the gamma, where gamma is the uh, euler mascheroni constant. And I believe this constant in front of two, to the e of 2 over e to the gamma is a little bit bigger than 1. I haven't calculated this number. But it's basically about 1.1, I think. So it's like 1.1 times LNP quantity squared, something like that. And he said that the, the gap, the maximal gap, is greater than this. Um, so anyway, and, and just by comparison, I say at the bottom, but according to prime number theorem, uh, the average size of the prime gap following P is about the natural logarithm of P. So all these bounds are a lot bigger than that. They're more like the square of the natural logarithm of P. And it's good to look at a graph of all this. Uh, I think this is a really nice graph. This is also the graph I showed on the cover slide. Um, the, the, the jagged curve here is the actual data. This is the the actual maximal prime gap um, for these particular size uh, primes. And I guess this table goes up to something like 10 to the, um, it's known up to like 10 to the 20th, but I think the number on top is something like 10 to the 22. Or, uh, so, so anyway, these are the known values of the maximal size of the prime gap. And uh, these other three uh, curves here are just these three upper bounds I talked about. The, the um, I guess, uh, Kramer's, uh, it looks like Kramer and, and Farouz, uh, uh, uh upper bounds are very close. Uh, Granville, um, I guess his isn't as good as the other ones. I'm a little surprised by this. But, um, uh, you know, I guess the best uh, upper bound we know, the tightest one we know is due to, Looks like it's due to Kramer. Yeah, Kramer, because I think Kramer's the one in black. So it looks like Kramer has the tightest upper bound. Uh, but these are just conjectures. I mean, they haven't been proven. But it looks like they do, they, they all are true, at least up to the size of the maximal prime gaps that we know so far. But, uh, you know, just because you have numerical evidence for something doesn't constitute a proof in math. You actually need a, you know, a logical proof. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things in math where things look like they're true, but they turn out to be not true. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that that concludes my uh, video for today on maximal prime gaps. Uh, thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.